Salamat po, Tita Glo. And the team po sa umuna sa ating sa mga week na yan. Praise the Lord because I believe as what the songs tell us that uh, God has given us this wonderful day for us to, to honor and worship Him. He has guided us here in this place that we can really feel His presence as, as if like the first song says that uh, heaven is among us, is within us. The heaven is our banner in us. We feel the blessings of heaven as we gather together and worship Him in our midst. So we praise the Lord for that time reminder. And as, as disciples of Jesus, as disciples of God, I believe that all of us really have to realize that we really need to give our, our, our worship to God, our, our praises to Him, because we believe that every moment of our life, we know that He is working powerfully and mightily. He's the one managing our life, guiding us. As the song says also, that His grace will see us through. We live by faith through His grace, by His grace. And that is a great assurance for us. That no matter how difficult our circumstances are, we believe that we can overcome everything because we believe that God is with us. So I think this is just but proper for, for all of us Christians to have this few hours of our life to really offer or worship to God, maybe in singing or studying His Word. This is the best time for all of us. Let's just set aside all those things that would probably hinder our worship to Him. And let's give our best worship to Him as we uh, study His Word today. Thank you. Thank you for all those uh, encouraging songs that we have just sung, reminding us as His disciples. And magandang maga po sa inyo lahat. Ayun. Kasi parang naka... Ay, sorry, pero pala tayo pang lahat. So, uh, uh, just last Friday, uh, uh, continuing with our discussion, just last Friday we have discussed, as a, uh, uh, Dick Van Peter has just mentioned in his introductions, that we have discussed uh, the, the life of uh, Abraham, taken from, from Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 8 to 10. We, there we have learned that uh, from the life of Abraham, how, how God precious equations, you know, he is the one balancing our life, so he is equating our life. How his gracious equations, you know, strengthens our spiritual condition. It is good to, for us to realize that every moment of our life, God is doing these things for us to see that he is our sovereign God. He is our great God. And there we have discussed actually last Friday that God equates our life by calling us to a realm of uncertainty for us to understand His sovereignty. We have discussed that last Friday. And I hope you still remember that uh, there we need to really uh, decide for, for the Lord. For us to understand His sovereignty. Like, like what Abraham experienced. He didn't know where to go, what to do, but he responded anyway. He went, he obeyed, and he went. Because he believed that God is suffering. Because God is calling him for a certain purpose in his life. There also we have discussed that God equates our life by casting us into the reign of austerity for us to underscore his sufficiency. We may be experiencing uh, needs in life, things that we need in life, and yet we could not experience it. Because, simply because God is the one providing all our days. He wants us to learn that He is the one providing all our days. That in every situation that we need Him, we believe that He is there always to give what we need in life. Not just, not, not simply because we want this thing, but we need this thing. So there we have experienced, we have underscored the, the sufficiency of God. And there we need to maintain the conditions that lean upon His sufficiency. Always lean on God. And that is what we experience, what we have learned from from Abraham, okay, and there also we have discussed the third point last Friday that God equates our life by carrying us through a ray of eternity for us to undergird the simplicity of life. You know, even in the simple things of life, 
when we experience this things, simple as this, and yet God is preparing great things for us. That our life is for eternity. When we experience simple things in life, it's okay. Because God is allowing all those things for us to experience because He is preparing us for a great life. Eternity. And therefore, as we journey here on earth, we can always focus our eyes on the things above and not just the things of the earth. And that is important for us as disciples. And that's how God equates us. He always aims to balance our life so that we will see who God is in our life. And as we continue on discussing this theme, balancing our life, and that is part of the reward of God, of God in our discipleship. Let's take a look at another passage in the scripture. It's taken from the Old Testament. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn to read to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17. A very familiar passage, I believe, for all of us. Chapter 17 of 1 Kings, verses 1 to 6. And let's see and learn from this. And if you have your Bibles with you, just please open it. In that passage, as I read this from NIV again, in reference to his word, shall be all right. Follow after me silently in your own Bibles and patience. It says here in verses in verse 1, down to 6. Now, Elijah the Tisbite from Tisbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kerit Ravine, east of Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to Kerit Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stay there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. May God bless the reading of his word. So, of course, for a moment for prayer. Dear God and loving Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us, giving us the strength in life, renewing our strength to be able to come to you, gather in your name, to exalt you and to worship you. We just want to thank you for the presence of each one, but most of all, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is in us, enabling us to understand your word. So it is our prayer, Lord, that even as we study this the scriptures of yours, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be our teacher. Thank you. We ask that you'll bless us all. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. The central idea of the text that we have read is about Elijah's declaration of God's word to chastise King Ahab, to some kind of discipline King Ahab, to punish so to speak. King Ahab, the king of Israel, and the disobedience of the nation, and how the word of the Lord timely came to Elijah to guide him in his difficult and troubled times. The, 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 the context says that he is in trouble. He is in a difficult situation in his life as, 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 as a prophet of the Lord. And from this passage, a, a desire, a purpose of the sermon for us, to, for us today is that, that we would be able to comprehend or understand and then appropriate the Word of God, guiding and encouraging us to persevere in our daily encounter with difficulties. It is always our fate that the Word of God will always guide and encourage us in our difficult times. Even nowadays, we know that we are in difficult times. There are a lot of reasons why we experience difficulties. Whatever it is, we experience difficulties in life. Just like this, this prophet of God. From this purpose, we'll be able to see the thought of this as we study the central idea of the sermon. From this passage, we are going to study there are specific divine intentions 
God wants us to know and absorb in our lives. As we face diverse and adverse challenges while responding and obeying His call for us. We are, we are mandated to always respond and obey God's call for us as His disciples. But we are aware that as we respond, as we obey, there will be trials, there will be difficulties, there will be things that we need to hurdle in our lives as Christians. And there are times we find ourselves stumble and fall. Just like the song that we have sung. But we believe that God is with us. And from here in this passage, we can see in the life of, 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 of Prophet Elijah, how he experienced also difficulties in life. Adverse conditions, so to speak. But God is always, was always with him in that moment of his life. Because he believed, but because Elijah believed that God is the true God who has promised him everything in his life. The title of the message today is that God's great intentions enlightens our disposition. Now there are times in our life that we, we find it hard really to decide. We, we want to make our life in order. We want to make our life in, you know, properly erased, so to speak. But we don't know how to do it. Sometimes we do not experience it. But you know what? Just think of the will of God. Just think of how God loves us. Just think of how God cares for us. And you realize that He is there helping us to see our life. True. Even in our disposition in life, we may, yes, we may find it hard, but God is always there helping us. But of course, the purpose of this is for us as disciples of Jesus, as disciples of God, is for us to understand His purpose, His will in our life. In our difficult times, like, like nowadays, we have to see that God still looks for believers or disciples who will continue to declare His name, to proclaim His name. And this is what Prophet Elijah experienced during his time. So let's take a look at this important, specific divine intentions of God. Happened in the life of Elijah and now in our generations. This is what God intends for us to do and experience. Number one, God wants us to expound the truth in His Word, especially in the midst of a deliberate waywardness of the unbelieving people. As you can see nowadays, a lot of people you will see are really deliberately doing things that are not pleasing unto the Lord. Nowadays, you can see. And from the life of Elijah, I, I have seen that it is also God's intention for us in our generations that as His disciples, we need to stand firm for what, what, what God's Word tells us. What God desires for us as disciples of this generation. And I can see in the life of Elijah, letter A, is that there, there is the kind of firm declaration of the word of the Lord. Even in the midst of difficult times. Elijah exemplified what it means to really declare the truth. He's not, he was not afraid. He was not afraid to tell the truth. He was there. In front of the king, in front of the people, telling them that this is what God wants us to experience. And this is what God wants them to see in their lives. You will notice in the passage, especially in verse 1, it says there, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain, in the next few years, except at my word. And Lee now, specific, very clear, and very, very brave. He is, uh, Elijah was so brave to tell the truth, to tell the will of God to these people who are deliberately disobeying God. You know, King Ahab is the king of Israel. 
He's supposed to be, you know, showing what, what God wants them to experience. And yet, the uh, things are not going better in the life of Ahab at this particular juncture. And here is Elijah, the prophet of God. A prophet who believed in God. A prophet who, who really want to declare what God's will for them. And I believe when, when, when Elijah said this, sabi nga, in your face, ito sinabi ni, ni Elijah sa harapan ng hari. Can you imagine? In front of the king, telling this, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither to nor rain in the next few years. Grabe, grabe yung power ng word dito ni Elijah. And I, obviously, these are the very words of God spoken to and through Elijah to rebuke the king, to rebuke the king of Israel for the idolatrous act, which is exactly a rebellion against God. You know, anything that we do, like, like worshiping other gods or idols, is idolatry and it's abomination before God, and that is rebellion against God. And this is what happened to Israel. They, be, they become engrossed in, 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 in serving and worshiping other gods. This is the clear example, I believe, that God is using Elijah to demonstrate to all the people of Israel that Yahweh, or the God of Israel, the true God, the one God, is the only true God and not Baal. You know, Baal is the pagan God in, in, in their place. Baalism. And Baal, and Baalism, has been introduced in Israel. And that is the problem. It's been introduced in Israel. And who did that? The very wife of King Ahab. The pagan queen, Jezebel. Yan ang problema eh. King Ahab, a Jew, married a pagan. And that what happened. When you marry an unbeliever, when you marry an unbeliever, you know, yeah. And this is what happened to King Ahab. And so, Baalism was introduced inside Israel. And they began to worship other, other gods except the true God. Aside from the true God. And here we can see the problem came in. And yet, God is speaking to Israel through prophet Elijah. Elijah received words from God, I believe. And now he was firmly declaring that Yahweh alone must be worshipped. Nowadays, just look around, anywhere in the world, even in this place, a lot of gods are being worshipped. And where are the believers, where are the disciples who are really worshipping the true and only one God? Where are they? Are you a disciple of God? Are we, are we truly worshipping God alone? That is the question. Even nowadays, do they see from us, do they see in us that we are really truly worshipping the true God or we are probably com compromising? Because it's, it's the trend. And anyway, a lot of people are doing this so we can probably do this also. That is a problem. But here you can see in the life of Elijah, I, by the way, the, the, the meaning of Elijah is very nice. The meaning of Elijah is, the Lord is my God. That is the meaning of Elijah. The Lord is my God. Gandana. What's the meaning of your name? And never mind, I have to go along with that. Elijah said, the Lord is my God. In this generations of believers, are we still declaring that the Lord is our God? And the things that we do? Are we still declaring that God is our, that the Lord is our God? What we can see in the life of Elijah is the word of the Lord is you know, burning in his heart that he needed it to proclaim. He needed 
to tell the king and the people to go back to the worship of Yahweh. Because they have forsaken worshiping the true God. I don't know how many Christians nowadays are really, truly worshiping the true God. I don't know. Or we, we worship God whenever we have a Friday service or a Sunday service. And then after this, we worship other God. I don't know. But how can we declare to other people that we have the true God? If nothing is seen in our life as the true disciples. You know, the problem in the context that we're discussing is that the wicked king Ahab had permitted his pagan wife, Jezebel, to bring the worship of Baal into Israel. That is the problem. And she was actually, Jezebel was determined to wipe out the worship of Yahweh during that time. She was so determined to wipe out the worship of Yahweh, the worship of God. I don't know. Do you feel something today that there are a lot of, there are groups probably who want us to stop worshiping the true God? And they would, you know, do anything, everything, just to stop us worship, just to stop us worshiping the true God. We don't know. We don't know. So sad because, you know, in Syria and in Iraq, you can see and hear a lot of Christians are beheaded. Because they worship the true God. What if ISIS come here in the UAE? Are we willing to face the challenges? I don't know. I don't know. You know what happened in, in, in France, right? In Belgium. They even threatened in our country. Have you, have you seen the video? They're going to target Manila. Especially all the Christians. These are the people disobeying God. But where are the Christians? Are we willing to tell the truth? It's hard for us, I know. But mind you, Baalism or idolatry is creeping in many nations. And the sad thing is, Baalism of idolatry is creeping inside the hearts of many. And the worst is, it's creeping inside the hearts of other believers. Baal was the Phoenician, the Phoenician po yung lugar na hanggang Lebanon, hanggang Syria. That's the Phoenician in the old times. That's the Phoenician. Baal was the Phoenician fertility god who sent rain and bountiful crops to si Baal yun. And the rituals connected with their worship were actually unspeakably immoral. So, in this condition, where are the Christians? Thank God there was Elijah. Elijah was sent to oppose vigorously by word and by action both Baal worship and those who engage in it. In this action of Elijah, he was clearly declaring his unwavering and loyal service to God because he said, the God whom I serve. Are we still serving God in this generation? Do we still honor him? Do we still declare it, proclaim his, his, his name? And I believe Elijah was so brave enough to stand for the truth. Because he can deliberately oppose the outright rebellion of Israel and her king. Elijah would cry foul and would burst and would hurdle his ultimatum. And sabi niya, there will be no rain or no do or no rain in the next few years except my word. Grabe, grabe yung power niya. Can you imagine? He, uh, Elijah can command the rain. No? Stop. Powerful. During the time, it is, it is called theocracy. God is uh, clearly dealing with his servants. Vividly. 
here is Elijah, a great example of that. There will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years. Can you imagine challenging the, the, the God, the small g, the God of rain and the God of grass, Baal, and then all of a sudden, here is the word of God, there would be no rain. There would be no crops in the land. Powerful. You know, this exposition, Elijah expounded the word of God powerfully and, you know, he expounded the word of God. And you know what? This is confirmed even in the New Testament. Huh? You remember the passage in James? James chapter 5. Let me just read this to you. James chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Sabi Sa New Testament na to, ah, we're talking about Old Testament and now sinabi sa Old Testament. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Three and a half years? Drought. Famine. Sigurado yun. And indeed there was famine and there was drought in the whole of Israel. And the Sabi Pedadito. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain. Wow, sarap na mga I really envy this kind of prayer, no? But I'm, wow, where can I, when can I pray this kind of prayer? Parang ganun, no? And again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Bumalik after three and a half years. Because Elijah declared the word of God. For us Christians, we have the word of God. For many, many years we've been studying the word of God. I don't know how many of us are really truly applying the word of God by faith. By faith. I know many of you have already prayed that, for example, the rain is coming and you pray, Lord, please stop that cloud. Wow. And it happened. It stopped. I know some of you have prayed that. It's good. Praise the Lord. It's by faith. It's, it's, it's really good to exercise faith. Believing that God is the one controlling everything. Believing that God is willing to use each one of us, believers, no matter who faith such as to declare who it is. Brethren, let's look around. Do we see waywardness or rebellion against God of the people nowadays? What I mean is people who worship other gods. Do we see outright rebellion against God nowadays? Yes, I, I, I think we can all agree vividly and clearly there are rebellions against God. The, the question is, do we tell them about the Word of God? This is God balances our ministry, our life. God has called us as his disciples to be in this place to tell others the righteousness of God. Or if you are not that brave enough to speak, to speak out, at least by our actions, by our actions, we tell them what is right and what is pleasing unto the Lord. Our prayer is that we'd be able to stand for the truth in this generation of disciples. God wants us to expound the truth in His Word, especially in the midst of deliberate waywardness of the unbelieving people. Sana makita sa atin yung bilang mga alagad ng Lord by our actions. Second point that I would like to share with you. God wants us to experience the comforts of His loving care even when our life is in the midst of real threats 
from the unforgiving people. We can see this in, the, in our passage in verses 2 to 4. Letter A in, 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 in this point is that we need to see that every moment of our life, God gives us fresh instructions. Just like what Elijah experienced, he received fresh instructions from the Lord. It says that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. The word of the Lord came to Elijah. Ano sabi ng Panginoon kay Elijah? Leave here, or leave this place. Leave here. Turn eastward. Ano ba east? Basta no? Pa east na. Eastward. And then may sinabi pa siya. What's the, what's the next? Hide. Hide. Tapos may sinabi pa. Where? In the curate ravine. May sinabi pa ulit. East of the Jordan. Nakita niyo yun? Yung Jordan mismo ngayon. The Jordan now. Doon yun, malapit. And then sinabi pa ng Panginoon, You will drink from the brook. Saan yun? Saan yung east of, ano, saan yun? Eh, wala siyang pang compass, ano? It doesn't mean it name to locate the place. But he obeyed. And the last phrase that God said to Elijah is, I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. Grabe. Yung ravens in Tagalog is uwak. The blackbirds, okay, the ravens. I believe it was a clear instructions that Elijah is not safe in his present abode that time. That's why God is telling him to leave the place. As the drought continued, famine hit the land. Nag-start na eh. Ahab began his search for Elijah. Now, it's King Ahab's turn to search for Elijah because of what Elijah did. Of what Elijah declared. The man Ahab thought caused all the trouble. Now, King Ahab is blaming Elijah who caused the trouble in the land because he declared the truth. Although it was clear that it was the sins of Ahab and Jezebel that led the nations to disobeying God's covenant. You know, it happens many times, beloved in the Lord, that people blame others for their misery. Yeah, diba? It happens many times. They created their own uh, problems and they blame others for their problems. It happens. Even in the old times, it happened. It happened. Even now, in our times. So, watch out. People will blame you for the things you have not done. This is a classic example of how God shows His loving care. Yes? Elijah was being blamed. He was being pursued. He was threatened by Ahab and Jezebel. But in this particular moment of his life, God is showing his loving care by giving specific and fresh instruction for the benefit of his servants or his disciples. You know what, what is interesting? When we are in a difficult time of our life, God will always give us fresh instructions from His Word. So it is important for us to always see and look at His Word, study His Word, so that we can see His instructions, we can understand His instructions. And this particular uh, moment in the life of Elijah, this also reveals that God leads His servant a step at a time as He tunes his heart to his word and always listen to his voice. The secret of knowing God's will is to study his word and listen to his voice. Even in difficult times, you will experience the voice of God. You will hear the voice of God if you study his word. You will have a lot of wisdom how to decide and what to decide. You will have. This means that God is directing Elijah, at its critical juncture, 
of his journey or in his journey, even in difficult times. What is amazing is that in difficult times, God is you know dictating actually or directing us in the critical juncture of our journey. Are you in your critical journey in this part of the world, UAE? No, there is God who directs you in your journey. Elijah was always close to God, I believe. That, it is, that is why he could easily hear his voice. He could easily hear God's words because he's so close to God. That is the secret of Elijah. And, and he, he was bent on obeying every word spoken to him. He's bent on he's obeying every word spoken to him. The secret is obey God's word, follow his will. You will experience his blessing, his guidance. His loving care. This is the reason why God would always take care of his obedient servant. Probably some of you would say in the context of Elijah, why not God simply cover Elijah with his feathers of protection? Why not command him to go like this, here, here? Why not simply just, you know, cover him, cover him with the feathers of protection? So that's, that's the last. Instead of sending him to, to a hiding place. Did you notice that? Why send Elijah to a hiding place? Whereas God can do everything to cover Elijah. Did you notice that? After all, God is a powerful God. Probably some of you, some of you would argue. You know what? God wanted Elijah to see the power of God in his own limitations. God wanted Elijah to see the power of God in his own limitations. Did you realize that? That all of us have limitations because God wants to show his power in our limitations. That God's mighty hands would be evident when his people obeyed and trusted him. Naging evident lang yung pagkilos ng Diyos. God even reserved, did you know this in the passage? God even reserved a river or a brook for him. Krabi, for Elijah's water supply is a brook. Can you imagine, ano? The supply is just a brook. A, a small river. And not only that, God even talked to the ravens, the uwak. and bring him his supplies. Wow. Sarap naman na. How I wish na no? Na mag-bring din ang cravings sa atin ang supply natin. Isn't that amazing? Powerful God. God can do anything just to show his loving care to you. God can use anybody. God can use anything to show his care. You know, when we are threatened by unforgiving circumstances or people that matter, God's loving care is always ready to comfort us, to show His cares upon us. Have you already experienced listening to the detailed instruction of God, especially during the times that you are being pressed on all sides or circumstances? Have you experienced listening to the detailed instructions of God. There are times that we don't know what to do, what to think. We are confused. We don't know what to do. But have you heard God telling you this, 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 and this? Are we still listening to God? Third point that I would like to share with you. God wants us to enjoy the goodness of His security and sustenance even in the midst of desolation due to the treatment done by unrelenting people. Unrelenting without mercy, without compassion. Unrelenting you. And we can see that in the passages in verses six and seven, 5 and 6 of our text. What we can see here is, letter A, is the, the full provisions of the Lord. Complete provisions of the Lord. 
for that moment in his life. The, the verse says, So he did what the Lord had told him. He went, inulita, the instruction he heard, and then he did as what God told him. Exactly. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the correct ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. And then the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. Okay, and he drank from the brook. What God said happened in the life of Elijah. Exactly. Because he believed in God. Even in difficult times. He believed in God. And things happened in his life. You know, this was a great illustration of a complete trust and unwavering obedience to the word of God. Elijah believed the words of God. He obeyed wholeheartedly. That is the secret. Milabin in the Lord, that means that in his lonesomeness or desolation, he was isolated because, you know, desolate. Elijah found the meaning of God's goodness. Sometimes God will place us in a, in, in a lonesome moment of our life, desolate for us to experience his power in our life, for us to experience his provision, his goodness, his safety for us. In his own ways, in his own terms. You know, Magandaron. He simply followed instructions and obeyed every word given to him. Sinuting, sinuting, sumibilag ang sumunod sa Panginoon. And at the perfect place of obedience, even though in the midst of isolation and desolation, Elijah found perfect peace. He found perfect peace, peace security, and provision from God. Even in the midst of difficulties. The secret of finding peace, security, ay yung nasa sitwasyon ni, ni Elijah. Obey God. Obey this word. You will find that. Until it dried up, the brook provided water. Kasi eventually the brook dried up eh. But it dried up eventually. The ravens willingly and unselfishly delivered his meals. You know what? Even in, 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 in isolation of our life, we can see the hands of God taking care of us. We can see, just like what Elijah experienced. And, and one thing that I've noticed in this, God used the brook, God used the ravens to show his provision, to show his sustenance for Elijah. We all know that ravens, or yung mga uwak, ano yun eh? Matakaw ng meat, di ba? Matakaw ng meat siya. Uwak is selfish. And yet, the ravens in this context that we're discussing, he, they willingly and unselfishly delivered the meals for Elijah. Delivered the meals. Imagine that. Even in, in the ancient time, there was no delivery, no? Wow, special delivery. So, old na yung delivery. It's just me, order, order, no? Even in those times, may yung delivery. Just pray to God, God, can you deliver? I need this God. Can you deliver? Amazing! Because you believe in God. You believe in God. And God delivers it in a special way. The raven was considered unclean, actually. And the testable and the mosaic law ng mga forbidden foods kasama ang ribbon sa pinagbabawal. Yet God used these birds 
to help sustain the life of his servant. Nothing impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. But you can see here, the Lord provided the food. The birds provided the transportation. Wow, high tech. <laughs> Not motorcycle. Kaliwali, my friend, but it's liberty. Special is special from uh, air. Uh, airlines. What's the name of the airlines? Ravens. <laughs> Ravens. This is how God miraculously provides the days for his people. Because they believe in God. Imagine eating bread and meat for many, many days in a remote place. In a lonesome place. How would you like that? Even though you're eating some kind of food like saffron, and yet you're alone. Siguro, baka mananawa din tayo. A very lonely and depressing place. Elijah was sustained, even in that situation, because God is the one providing. Elijah was sustained because he was given by God, and he was comforted, he was protected, he was sustained by God, because God loves and cares for him. Because he is obeying and following the will of God. You know, when you follow and obey the will of God, He will never leave you, nor forsake you. He will provide all your needs. I close this message. God's great intentions enlighten our disposition. God, God wants us to expand the truth in His, in His Word, especially in the midst of a deliberate waywardness of the unbelieving people. God wants us to experience the comforts of His loving care even when our life is in the midst of real threats from the unforgiving people. God wants us to enjoy the goodness of His security and sustenance even in the midst of desolation due to the treatment done by unrelenting people. Beloved in the Lord, let us always remember to live life according to His word. Whatever happens in, you know, whatever happens His words, I believe His loving care, our safety, our sustenance will, will always be in our hearts as disciples. In this experience of Elijah, we can learn that nothing is impossible with God. That's how we balance our life. Nothing is impossible with God. The power of nature are limited, but not the power of the God of the nature. We can also learn that listening and waiting upon the Lord will give us great confidence in His will and in His power. I would like to say this statement and then I will close this. And I want you to listen to this. It has well been said that the will of God will never lead us where the grace of God cannot keep us. And care for us. Let me reiterate this statement. The will of God will never lead us where the grace of God cannot keep us and care for us, like in the experience of Elijah. May we continue to experience also the life, what, what, what Elijah experienced in his life. God cares for all of us. That's how we balance. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much. <clears throat>